Of all, congratulations. My name is Fernando Valeque de Barros. I am freelancing and working for Estado de São Paulo from Brazil. Okay. You did, you win, uh, an Australian national team win a World Cup game for the first time since 2010. But of course you don't come here to win just a game. Exactly. Now you want the qualification. So tell me how your plans to beat Denmark and clinch to the Can next Can I just round. have five minutes to enjoy this? <laughs> but uh, look, and what I've just been told, it's the first clean sheet we've held at a World Cup since 1974, which is crazy. But uh, at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's just one game. <clears throat> and as I said before uh, in the press conference yesterday and everything, that I, I do believe that uh, the best friendly match we could have ever had was against France because we, uh, we, we, get, we got punished for our mistakes. Uh, today, obviously, the opposition was, wasn't as good as the world champions, but I felt that uh, our performance, uh, our fight and our grit and our determination, the old Aussie way, was uh, uh, very important tonight. And uh, I'm very, very proud of the boys. The lady in the left. Uh, hello, Emma Sanders from BBC. Congratulations on, on the victory. I just wondered how the mindset of the players differs knowing that you can go into that final game with qualification actually in your own hands and not having to rely on results elsewhere. Well, we've got to see what the result is tonight, obviously, um, with uh, France against Denmark. But uh, nothing will change for us. We will focus on ourselves <clears throat> and focus on... Uh, making sure that we get ourselves right. That, uh, and that's what I said to the boys <clears throat> when I got them in a circle after the game, is I'm very proud, but we've achieved nothing at this moment. Yes, obviously we can talk after about you know one win and uh, it hasn't been done for 12 years and all that stuff, but uh, you know I'm here and we're here to go as far as we can go. So that one game is done and I don't want any emotion from the players. I don't want them sitting up all night watching social, uh, looking at social media and all that stuff. It's about <clears throat> getting uh, sleeping well, recover well, and get the mindset ready for Denmark. Continue on the right side here. Hey, Graeme. Uh, Oliver from news.com.au. Um, after the France game, there was a lot of former um, Socceroos and fans who, who, cares? Were, who were critical. What, what's your message to them? They've never coached. Yep. And, to... <clears throat> and they've never been to a... Sorry? And, and former players? Uh, well, I, I don't. I haven't seen who was critical, right? But they've. I think some of them have never even been to a World Cup. So I don't. You know, I don't listen to them. They have no effect on my life. Gentleman in the middle. Uh, Graham Joe Barton from Daily Telegraph, mate. We we saw Martin Boyle was was here today. Obviously, he's still with the squad. It seems to have delivered quite kind of like an emotional push for this team in a way. And I, I noticed you had him in the circle kind of after the game. Just wanted to know what that message was to the players and, and kind of what, what he's bringing to to the group. We've moved him into the staff now as uh, OV, OVM, official vibe manager, to keep all the boys up because he's just one of the most fantastic blokes you'll ever meet in your life. And uh, even though he's got that injury, <clears throat> the most important thing for him is the rest of the boys. And uh, there was no way he wanted to go home and no way I wanted to send him home. He wants to stay, support and be part of it. And he, <clears throat> he deserves it more than anyone for what he did through the qualifying campaign. Gentleman in the football shirt, second row. I'm Mr. Arnold Matthew from uh, Sydney, Australia. I just wanted to ask you, how do you manage now the, the elation from winning this game and, and then switching to, to prepare for Denmark? And uh, can you reveal more of what you said to your group of players out there on the pitch after the final whistle? Yeah, look, I just said to them that uh, no doubt the, the nation is ex extremely proud, and, uh, but we've done nothing. It's, uh, you've achieved something we can talk about after the tournament, but we're here to go as far as we can go. I don't want any celebration. Just enjoy this couple of minutes with the fans, the Australian fans here in the, in the stadium. Get yourself in the dressing room, ice baths, recover, and get ready for the next one. We take a question from the virtual stadium. From the where? Hand is raised. 
No one. Then we continue in the room. The lady in the middle, please wait for the microphone. Uh, Graeme, you mentioned um, the players having a couple of minutes to enjoy some time with the fans in the stadium. What about your message to the fans back home, um, given that you're trying to keep everything, you know, kind of under control and just not let the lid blow off just yet? Yeah, but uh, the fans back at home, <clears throat> you know, it's a moment they'll remember for the rest of their lives and uh, just want them to enjoy. And that's what uh, I said to the boys before the game. You know, let's put a smile on the nation's face. You know, there's one team, and I've said this many times, one or two teams that, you know, bring the nation together, and that is the Socceroos and the Matildas. And uh, when the Socceroos play at World Cups, AFL fans, rugby league fans, they all become cricket fans, they all become football fans. And uh, I can imagine <clears throat> the celebrations that are going home, especially uh, at home, sorry, especially with it on primetime TV at 9 o'clock, kick-off to 11. I think uh, there'll be a few hangovers in the morning. I won't have one. Another try to connect to the virtual stadium. There we go. Please speak. سؤال باللغة العربية مرحبا كوتش أود أن أسألك على أن طريقة لعب المنتخب التونسي في الشوط الأول سهلت عليكم الأمور خاصة أنه بعض التغييرات في المنتخب التونسي في الرسم التكتيكي في الشوط الثاني أصبح المنتخب التونسي أخطر من الشوط الأول أعتقد أن we started the game very well, <clears throat> in a defensively in a 4-4-2, and um, they only had one intention, and was, it was, what was important was that we were getting in their faces and giving them no time on the ball. And we knew that if they did that, they'd just uh, play very direct and very long. You know, we turned over possession a little bit under fatigue, but uh, overall, um, I was very, very proud of the way the defence you know, held the line, and as I said, that's the first clean sheet since 1974. And Harry Sutter and Kai Rolls and these guys were incredible. Another question in the room? Let's give again to the gentleman here. Uh, Annie, we spoke to Mitch Duke, and you've been, we spoke to Mitch Duke just before. Oh, yeah. um, obviously, you've, you've mentioned Kai and Harry were incredible, but just a word on Mitch's performance felt like his best game, maybe oh. ever for the Socceroos. Yeah, look, I, when I say I, I meant that defensively, the boys, everyone was outstanding. Craig Goodwin, Lecky, work rate was incredible. Aaron Moy, Jackson, I, I can't. Every one of them were, was fantastic, and um, you know Mitchell Duke. I've uh, <coughs> obviously got a lot of. Uh, you know, faith in the kid and, uh, you know, people talk about where he plays, but uh, I always know when he walks over that white line, he will give more than 100% uh, for, for the team, but also for the, the jersey and the nation. Time for two more questions. On the right side, the gentleman with the sunglasses, please. Um, after the um, at Duke's goal, I saw you sort of giving a message to the players. What were you telling them and, and what lessons do you think that the players learnt from the France game? Yeah, look, I think, um, I don't think I know. The next five minutes after a goal is scored is so important mentally and you've got to go continue playing. Otherwise, if you're celebrating that goal emotionally, that's when you can concede. And uh, it's about keeping switched on and with no celebration at all and, and going for the second goal straight away. Last question to the gentleman with the glasses left side. Uh, David Weiner from Keep Up. Graham, talk for the last 10 minutes. How excruciating and nervous were they? But how proud of you the way the guys withstood that barrage and, and particularly when they must have been exhausted with um, and also a note on, mm. on the captain, Matt Ryan, who, who really stood up with those aerial balls yeah. coming in late. Matty, fantastic. But uh, <clears throat> when you see Aaron Moy, one of the quietest people I've ever met, pumped up like that after he did that tackle and, you know, to the crowd, it inspires the rest of the team. And then Harry Sutter's tackle, Harry Sutter's tackle, sorry, where he got across and, 
you know, those type of things are inspirational and uh, it really edges the rest of the boys on.